Hello and welcome to this presentation today. Okay, we're going to be talking about adaptations to assessments of qualifications. But firstly, we need to look at why these modifications have been made. Most people will be aware of the changes which were made for the achievement of GCSE and A-level qualifications, but little will have been heard about vocational qualifications. When COVID-19 hit in March 2020, as like all the GCSEs and A-levels, we were asked to work with Qualification Wales and the consortium, Sitting Gills and WJC, to consider short-term modifications to the assessment of qualifications to allow students to complete their studies. As you can imagine, this was an extremely stressful time for students, worrying if they would be able to complete their studies. So we needed to make sure that no student was negatively impacted due to COVID. So we put in place some interim measures and solutions. Unfortunately, as you know, with continued disruption, we now need to look at longer term solutions. We've had more time to consider the issues and the adaptations initially implemented back in the summer have now been refined and extended. So in this presentation, we will be looking at the following qualifications. Level two core and level three CCPLD qualifications and adaptations. So firstly, looking at the level two qu core qualification. The CCPLD core has five sections, health and wellbeing, professional practice, safeguarding and health and safety. You may, you may or may not be aware it's aligned to the early years induction framework. So how is this core qualification assessed? So the formal assessment is made up of three case studies and a multi-choice question test. Case study one is based on the principles and values of children care, play, learning and development and health and well-being. Case study two is again based on the principles and values and professional practice as an early years and childcare worker. Case study three is again based on the principles and values and also safeguarding children. The multi-choice question test is based on all of the sections and is 75 minutes long. So the case studies can be downloaded two weeks before the formal assessment takes place and this will give workers the time to revise and prepare. The assessment then takes place in controlled conditions. This differs across different assessment centres but an example would be a quiet office space, a classroom. It wouldn't be appropriate in a busy office. So the work has a number of questions to answer on the case study based on the sections that they are covering. For example, safeguarding. They are able to take an A4 sheet of notes with them and they are given 60 minutes to complete the tasks, but they can't have any completed answers. If workers fail to achieve the marks needed to pass the assessment, they can undertake it again using the same case study, but they'll have different questions. So further details about the total number of times they can be retested is included in the qualification specification. And these can be found on, on the Health and Care Learning website. So once workers have achieved all three case studies, they can undertake the multi-choice question test. This is an online test, but if needs be, it can be completed on paper, but it needs to be requested in advance. There's lots of sample multi-choice question tests, case studies and expected answers to help both the manager and the workers so they know what to expect. And again, these are on the Health and Care Learning website. It's the job of the assessor to make sure that the learners had sufficient teaching and learning so that they're adequately prepared for the assessment to make sure they have the best possible chance of passing. The workbooks developed for the Early Years in Childcare All Wales Induction Framework can help with this. The, the assessor will discuss and agree the learner's readiness for assessment with both the learner and the manager, and it's really important that everybody participates in that. So you may have um, 
learners or workers on the old QCF qualification and it's still the assessors who is responsible for the assessing the learner and making the judgment. So the level two qualification, what has changed? So these adaptations have, have been agreed because of COVID-19. So the number of assessment learners need to complete has been reduced temporarily. So learners be registered before the 31st of August will need to complete the qualification by the 18th of December. They will need to complete one case study and one multi-choice questionnaire. In exceptional circumstances, they can do two case studies and no multi-choice question. And this was to put in, put in place to ensure that learners were not disadvantaged as a result of COVID-19 restrictions, particularly where assessment centres have been closed. So we've talked about those, those that started before August, the level two qualification for those registered after the 1st of September. All learners registered after the 1st of September or those who cannot complete by the 18th of December must undertake the full assessment process. They've got to do all the case studies and the multi-choice question there. So many centres have put things in place which will ensure safe environments for learners to complete their tasks under controlled conditions. Okay, in the next slide, we'll be talking about what can happen if this is not the case. Okay, what if there are further restrictions and learners cannot access environments? So for example, um, the two week fire break we've just had. So the option one, the center can reschedule if the length of delays up to four months. Option two is that they can do remote verbal question and answer case study but the centre must be closed for longer than four months and the qualification must be needed for progression. So for example, for employment or for, for a further course, <clears throat> or finally, because the learner needs to self quarantine. We're also looking at the possibility of remote invigilation. Sit and girls are going to pilot this over the next, over the next coming months. And this will reduce the need for learners to complete their case studies or multi-choice questions in centres itself and recordings will be used to check the learner is not using additional materials or resources to answer the questions, for example, mobile phones. <clears throat> okay, so I think what we're trying to, to say is that it's really important that we retain integrity of qualifications. It's important to ensure that whatever adaptations are put in place the qualifications retain their integrity. Therefore, sitting girls have put in measures in place to ensure all learners have completed learning across all of the qualification and the assessors carried out formative assessment to ensure that the learner is ready for the formal assessment. We need to make absolutely sure that core skills have been attained and knowledge have been embedded into practice. We cannot comp compromise on this. We need to make sure that we have highly skilled, safe, competent, qualified workforce working with our children. Okay, so how are the level of two and three qual practice qualifications? Okay, so again, we'll recap on the assessment of arrangements in more normal times. Okay, so assessment takes place over a period of six to 12 months. The assessor will carry out a minimum of four observations. The plans are agreed between the learner, assessor and manager, a portfolio of evidence, a reflective log of practice and a final discussion which helps the assessor confirm or consolidate any gaps in knowledge. During these assess assessments, the learner must show that how they support a child during a period of transition support an opportunity in an outdoor outside environment and an inside environment support a child that with an experience that is non-routine and support a child on a one-to-one -one basis and they also need to make sure that they that they support an opportunity that involves more than one child full details of the assessment requirement can be found again on the health and care learning wales website 
We're in relation to the level three CCPLD practice qualifications, assessment takes place over a period of six to 12 months and the learner is required to complete four observations of children within a real work environment. In addition to this, the learner must evaluate and reflect on the learning, develop and play health and well-being of children. They need to plan and deliver four opportunities that cover physical health, communication, language and literacy, cognitive, personal, social, and emotional and behavioural. The assessor will question the learner to make sure and sample their knowledge and understanding. Plans will be developed and agreed between the learner, assessor and manager to ensure that they are suitable. In addition, the learner will produce a portfolio of evidence, a reflective log and a final professional discuss, uh, discussion. And this will help the assessor confirm or consolidate any gaps in knowledge. So in relation to the level two and three practice qualifications, what's changed? So, as we've said, observation of practice is central to the assessment of the CCPLD qualifications. We need to make sure that we have a professional, qualified and competent staff. As many childcare settings are not able to support access to assessors as a result of COVID-19 restrictions and safety issues, it has been agreed from September until 2021, where observation cannot take place, a suitably experienced employer leader can undertake the role of an expert witness. The expert witness will be expected to observe the learner in practice and this will be followed by a remote professional discussion between the assessor, learner and expert witness. They'll be the eyes and ears of the assessor. The assessor will be, ex will be able to ask questions of both the learner and expert witness to make, dis dis to make decisions of competency for the achievement of the qualifications. So who will, be, who will be the expert witnesses? As I've said earlier, the expert witness will be a suitably employed manager or leader. They must have a working knowledge of the qualifications or the units for which they're giving testimony. They need to be occupationally competent in their area of expertise to at least the same level of the qualifications for which they're providing testimony. They can have either a qualification and assessment or workplace performance or professional work role, which involves evaluating the everyday practice of staff. We need to be clear they are providing a testimony, not a judgment. Um, and as I said previously, this will be followed by a remote professional discussion between the learner, the manager and the assessor. The assessor is therefore responsible for making the final judgment and will triangulate evidence from across the assessment tasks. So how will the expert, expert witness be supported? Expert witnesses must be provided with induction training and ongoing support from the learning provider. The learning providers are expected to work in partnership with employers and are also asked to consider if observations cannot, can take place, then they must, they must do that. They need to think about allocating assessors to specific employment settings with an attempt to keep the number of assessors to a minimum to reduce footfall. We need to separate activities around planning, review and progress checks. We need to look at capturing the capabilities of all within a setting to support assessment, for example, work-based assessors. And making use of the outdoor environment for outside observations where possible and appropriate. That was a whistle tour of all the adaptations that we've made to the, the core and the level two and three. Thank you for your time. Diog.